There was probably no turkey at the first Thanksgiving. There was certainly no cranberry sauce, applesauce, pumpkin pie, candied sweets, mashed potatoes, or forks. The pilgrims didn't know about any of that stuff. Well, I'm here with Mary Carr and Barbara Flerchik from the Newbridge Landing Historic Site, and we're going to attempt to create the first Thanksgiving dinner that was served by the pilgrims in 1621. Welcome, Jim. We're pleased to see you. Uh, I'm pleased to be here, I think. <laughs> how would you like to help us pound some corn? All right. Now, how do I do this? No corn, corn here? Yes. Okay. Oh, look at this. What kind of what kind of stone is this? That's a native stone. Native stone. Very, very old. So I just have to pound this, right? Pounding, I guess. And how long do I have to pound it? Until it's bound into small pieces and then they'll how long does that take? Long time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the only thing we know about the first Thanksgiving comes from a letter from 1621. We know they shot some fowl, probably ducks or geese, and that the local Native Americans brought over five deer. So to recreate the first Thanksgiving here at Newbridge Landing Historic Site at River Edge, we're making roast goose, roast venison tenderloin, and we're rounding that out with two things that would have been familiar to the pilgrims, stewed pumpkin and corn grits. And that's corn I ground myself. The corn we're using here is flint corn, a 17th century variety that's almost extinct. We had to send away to Rhode Island to get some. We are splaying the goose over an open fire on a flat spit, and she's dripping rather nicely, I'm afraid. And it's going to take two and a half to three hours. It's best to do it outside if you can, even in the cold weather because it's safer. If you cook a large piece of meat inside, you're liable to burn the house down, particularly a nice big goose like this. That's a 12-pounder there. We're making venison, roast venison. Venison stew, actually. It's been marinating for a couple days, and it's going to be roasted in a pot and then stewed. Slicing the inside, you know, slicing them in half and slicing in quarters and then cutting the inside out. And then he's cutting with little pieces going to go in that pot and we're going to stew it up. Oh, the aroma. Oh, it's so good. There we go. Oh, Mary. Our goose is so good. A simple meal for five people. So I can only imagine what the pilgrims went through in 1621 to serve 300 people, grinding the corn and doing everything from scratch. Mary, we outdid ourselves. Anyway, Dinner is just about served, and we'll have to see what this tastes like, but I know what it feels like. Got a nice blister to prove it. Well, this is a representation of what we think the first Thanksgiving dinner might be like, with uh, roast goose and venison and uh, corn grits and the kinds of food that the pilgrims actually would have eaten as opposed to the kind of thing that we serve for Thanksgiving these days. So let's find out how it tastes. Dig in. Should I just get this one? It's kind of like turkey. It's like dark meat turkey. It's a little bit dry, but good. Very, very tasty. During the Civil War, they really wanted to have a national holiday to bind the country together. Somebody came up with the idea of having a Thanksgiving based on this original uh, harvest feast that the Pilgrims had after their first year in Plymouth Colony. Uh, in uh, 1863, President Lincoln actually made it a national holiday. But everything we, know, we think we know about Thanksgiving really comes from the mid-19th century.